April 11th, 2022. From El Cajon, California, this is episode 255 of You Can Bet On That. Hi, everybody. Welcome to You Can Bet On That, a podcast for the recreational gambler. My name is Mark Duvall, and sitting across from me is Dr. Mike. Hello. How you doing, Dr. Mike? Oh, hanging in there, Mark. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Getting excited about those Padres? Yes. Off to, like, a yeah, terrible... Yeah, first sp- place. We're in first place, my friend, <laughs> nice. as of this morning. <laughs> All right. Well, let's revel in that. <laughs> they then. had a terrible first game, but they won uh, the next yeah, two, yeah. so... I was listening to a radio station on the way over here, a mm-hmm. sports talk show. Yeah. And the guy was talking about millennials, and he's a millennial. Okay. So, so he can say whatever he wants. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. I mean, he's 30 years old. Okay, right. He said that one of the things about his generation is they don't handle disappointment well. Okay. And so when a team does poorly, they're upset at the team. Right. Because for whatever reason, they haven't had to deal with disappointment like, say, generations past. Okay. And, you know, you can get into a whole debate about all that and everything, but it got me thinking about us because here we're used to it, right? <laughs> yeah. We are. I mean, seriously, if you live long enough, you get in your 60s and you're like, okay, you know, you've had the ups and the downs. And as a sports fan, I think that's part of watching sports. So when you say, you know, why do I watch teams that I root for? Because I always get upset and stuff. Yeah. But you still watch. Well, I mean, you still are tempted to watch. You know, if the Padre <laughs> game's on and you're just not doing anything, you'll still watch the game because that's what sports fans do. And if you're a sports fan long enough, you learn to realize there are going to be bad times. There's going to be some good times. And you just have to deal with that. Yeah. I. So what Mike's talking about, I, a couple of times I've said to him, you know, Mike, I don't like watching sports where I care about the outcome. Yeah. Like, I really enjoyed the basketball tournament because I kind of really didn't care, right? right Once the right. Aztecs were, sure. you know, it's like sure. that. And I'll have to admit, the other night when the Padres kind of blew that lead, I turned it off. I yeah. don't... It, and I caught myself watching too, Mike, even the games last night, I would watch them when they were at bat. Yeah. And I'd turn away when they weren't. <laughs> I just don't enjoy it anymore. Yeah. So I don't know if I'm contradicting what you say, well, but it's I just... I don't know. I, I mean, for me... I still watch it knowing that I may be disappointed, yeah, and I'm okay with that because I've gotten used to it. Yeah, well, okay. I mean, we've had lots of disappointments in our lives, <laughs> so we're we're used to that, yeah, right? Yep. But I mean, as a sportsman, you've got to have a thick skin. Yeah, right. And, and you know, a lot of people don't. They just can't handle that. And they, the guy was commenting because the Lakers missed the playoffs. Oh, right. That was and a big deal. That's yeah. what started it. <laughs> yeah. And you know, all the Laker fans are just totally upset at the team yeah, and blah, yeah. blah, blah, right. and everything. And, and you know, they're spoiled, right? How many times have they won <laughs> championships and stuff and had great teams? And this year they don't. And, you know, everyone's upset. Well, think about if you're like a... Detroit Pistons fan, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, they had years ago where they were great. The last 20 years, they've been terrible. Yeah. So you just let it flow over your back, Mark. Okay, well, that's good advice. And the Padres will do what they do, (laughs) and at the end of the year, we'll either be somewhat happy or very disappointed. (laughs) We won't be ecstatic. Right, we won't be be very happy. happy. Somewhat Somewhat happy happy or or very very disappointed. That's a good way. Well, I like what you're saying. Let it just flow over you. Yeah. My way of letting it flow over me is to just not watch games that I care, care about. about yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I I am more at peace when I'm watching a game I don't care about. Yeah. Oh, it's, I, it's, and I do. You know, yeah, like it's more relaxing. Well, like the Masters golf here. Mm-hmm. I mean, I really don't care who wins. Yeah. I just like it to be close and kind right. of exciting you want a and competitive. Fun, yeah. A competitive thing. It's relaxing to me to watch that. Yes. I do get tense with the Padres when you know. Yeah. Something's see, going I don't on. need that stress in my life anymore. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, that's what pills are for, Mark. <laughs> oh yeah. I I should contact my doctor. <laughs> yeah. It's hard for me to watch Padres games. <laughs> Is there a pill for that? <laughs> no, but we have a club. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on our last episode, listener Eric told a story about how his reservation at Horseshoe in Tunica was canceled the day he was supposed to arrive due to a snowstorm. And yeah. when he wrote us that, he kind of put it in quotes, right? You know, Well, like, yeah, because snowstorm is can be a lot of things to a lot of different people, right? Yeah. Well, I he mean, w- if we got one flake here, that'd be a snowstorm in <laughs> yeah, San Diego. Yeah, people would be crashing Minnesota, into Minnesota, if yeah. it's less than a foot, it's just a regular day. <laughs> 
But he said a couple things bothered him. Number one, he was notified only by email. Right. And number two, all the roads were open to the casino. And so he actually called them and spoke with somebody who told him that his reservation was canceled due to concerns over customer safety. And he was thinking like, well, what do you mean? I mean, shouldn't that be up to me? Right. I know I can drive there and get there. He's right? assuming he's the customer <laughs> they're worried about. Right. So we actually got responses from several listeners. They said the reason his reservation was canceled was probably because there were already guests staying at the hotel right. who couldn't leave because of the snowstorm. And that could mean a lot of things. Even though there's no snow maybe right at the casino, Maybe they can't get to the airport, or maybe if they were to get to the airport, their flight's been canceled because of weather in other parts of the country, right. you know, something like that. So probably what the representative was saying, you know, without saying it, was, right. well, we already have guests here who need to stay longer than they intended, and so your room is not available, the reservation that you made. Yeah. And they didn't say that to Eric. Right, because right, so, that would probably infuriate him. Maybe. I don't know. I think it would actually make more sense than what they actually did. But yeah, depending on the person. Yeah. Depending on the person, depending on the person. So right. it's kind of a no-win situation, I guess, you know, whether that kind of thing. Right. But maybe that's what happened. Do you remember, might have been a couple years now, where there were some fire concerns, which we get regularly here in Southern California, out near Harris Rincon, mm-hmm. and the power went out. Right. And they made the people staying at the hotel leave. Well, which makes there, sense. For there was that no really power. is safety reasons. Yeah, well, right. there yeah, was yeah. no power. Right. But you're telling them, okay, leave, get on the roads. There's fires out there. <laughs> and sure, we understand you're here from New York and you're here a week and you've been here one day and you have nowhere to go or stay, <laughs> but leave. You've yeah. got to leave. Yeah. So, you know, what did they do for those people? I like? don't know specifically, but yeah. I wa- if I recall, they found other lodging for them and they probably made some kind of arrangements for yeah. transportation, right? I guess so, they would have had to. They yeah. have no car or yeah. anything. And it's kind of out there. It's not like you call a cab. Yeah. It was a weird situation. I remember we drove out there, right? Yes. Uh-huh, and right. and, and a, it was closed. Right. It's, like, you know, they what? turned us away, right? And it's like, oh, why didn't we know? Actually, yeah. they had posted something like on their Twitter we or Facebook. We just didn't even think about it. We didn't looking. even think about we it. We didn't right? think the fire was that close, which it, it really wasn't. Well, it was it, just that the lot power went out. Right. And it the power going out might not have been the results of the fire, but it could have been the electric company actually it, turning, turning the them power off. off. Right. Yeah, that, know, for safety. That, and I as think a matter of fact, I think that's what it was, the power. So we just got to have to remember whenever there's fire. Fire danger. We need to <laughs> check at least call time. or find yeah. out something. So yeah. in uh, San Diego, fire danger or one flake of snow. Right. We'll call ahead. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and earthquake. Ah, we don't know when that's going to happen. Yeah, we we could be on the road when that. Every happens. day we should call. <laughs> Is there any earthquake problems? <laughs> that's right. Well, I remember my grandfather told me a story. You remember my grandfather? We used oh, to go yeah. to Vegas Great with him guy. all the time. He said he was up in Reno. With my grandmother and my great aunt and uncle, uh-huh. and they got snowed in there. They were planning on leaving, right? And they couldn't, yeah. so they had to, you know, pay for another night at the hotel. Yeah. To hear him tell the story, you know, they lost way more than just the <laughs> lodging and right. you know for the extra because they had nothing else to do. There was right. nothing to do. You couldn't right. go outside. Or anything. Yeah, they well, your had dad to probably wasn't too, or your grandpa probably wasn't too upset staying there. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> your grandma might have thought differently, but. <laughs> Anyway, so that might have been the case, Eric. I don't know if that helps you, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does that you make you feel better? Yeah. You, were, you were a good person by not showing up. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, Mike, I am back from Biloxi, and uh, yes. yeah, we really had a good time. It was a very good. good trip. Kind of relaxing, because there was no real agenda. I certainly wasn't responsible to be anywhere or anything. Yeah, but, that's uh, always nice. Yeah, so yeah. it was kind of nice in that respect. I purposely have not talked to you about your trip, that's because right. I wanted yeah. to hear everything for the first time right here. Yep. Just like everybody else. Okay, so are you so, ready? I'm ready. There yep. you go. Wow me. Okay. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, I flew into New Orleans which it makes a lot more sense because I was able to get a nonstop flight there. Yes. And plus it would have been more expensive to actually fly into the airport close to Biloxi. So, right. You Those know, small airports get you. Plus it would have been, I couldn't have gone nonstop to, you know, right. straight to Biloxi. Right, you got to go somewhere. So I decided to do that and then rent a car when I got there. And my plan was to, on the way to Biloxi, actually swing over to Harris, New Orleans, just to check that out. 
and then head on to Biloxi. Well, anyway, the flight was fine, but it was absolutely the roughest landing I've ever been through. Really? Right? I mean, just weather you know, problems. Yeah, yeah, turbulence and oh, you know, wow. getting down. Now, I didn't realize what the weather was like till I actually got out yeah, of the, the airport. airport extremely windy to the point where it almost blew me over once. That's wow. how, how wow. windy it was, right? When you were landing and it was pretty turbulent, what were you thinking? Oh, you know, I'm pretty calm in situations yeah. like that. Okay. Seriously, I was. I had my you iPhone. and Really? Because I'd be thinking, great, my last gambling trip was to Harris Rincon and I lost. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be so mad. <laughs> Your emotions, I know, can kind of take over. Right. When it comes to air travel... The rational side of my brain is able to kind of push down the emotional side. Well, and what happens is going to happen, right? Yeah, right. I have I no mean, control you, you have over no, it. What, there's nothing I can do to no, help the situation, no, right? No, you might as well sit there and just be calm and figure out, you know, you're going to play two pair behind or pair pair. Right. That's you know, that's what I think hand. about it most of the trip anyway. <laughs> sure, I could have taken off my seatbelt and gone running up and down the aisle, you know, screaming, we're all going to die. Right. I don't know that that would have helped. Yeah. But. <laughs> If you do run up and down there, I'll take all your clothes off. I mean, you're going to get in trouble <laughs> either way. Yeah, either way. Might as well take <laughs> advantage take, of it. Take yeah. all your clothes off. Yeah, yeah. So I had gotten a rental car through Auto Slash. We've talked about them before. It's kind of a nice website where you go and they find the lowest cost for your car. Even after you've made your reservations, if they find something lower, they contact you. So anyway, they got me a car through Economy Rent-A-Car. And so none of us, when Mississippi Rob originally suggested this weekend, it didn't really occur to any of us that it was Final Four weekend in New Orleans, right? That's right, where it's taking right. place. So I didn't even think about it, but I got this rental car at, you know, kind of a high price. But, oh, well, well, that explains it, it, right? Right, it's yeah. They're renting all their cars out. So at New Orleans, they have a rental car hub that you take a shuttle to, right. which is pretty common a lot of places for do. airports. So I jumped on that and got to the rental car hub, and I'm looking around for economy rent-a-car, and there's just nothing. There's nothing there. And okay. There weren't many people actually at the rental car place. I went up to the national and said, yeah, I'm looking for economy rent-a-car. And he says, oh, yeah, I think they're actually off-site. Okay, so I call the 800 number, right? and I'm trying to explain what's going on. He just transfers me to the New Orleans location, Okay, and they said, oh, yeah, we'll send a shuttle to pick you up. And I said, so should I have waited at the airport? There was nothing that yeah, said, right. economy, don't get on this don't, shuttle or anything. Don't get on and he said, no, no, we'll pick you up at the rental car hub. Okay. That's what we do. You take the shuttle from the airport to the rental car hub, and then, and then we you have to you call? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, but there's no, I didn't know, right? Yeah, so. there's no big sign that says if you're here for economy, you're screwed. Yeah, right, there's nothing. <laughs> so I get on the phone with the guy. He said, yeah, they're on their way, they're on their way. And I wait, luckily he waited on the phone with me, you know, to yeah. the guy, right? So yeah, this little van pulls up and I get in, it's filthy and, you know, the floors are all dirty. Oh, and I God. <laughs> The off-site location was actually fairly close. Yeah. But it was in this abandoned hotel. I shouldn't say abandoned. It was going through. <laughs> they were doing renovations, but it was closed. This trip is starting Oh, my great. gosh. <laughs> and luckily, I'm still very calm. There's nowhere I need to be. I, so I walk into the lobby of this place, and sure mm -hmm. enough, there's a rental car office right off right. the lobby. But all the employees are kind of milling around the lobby. And when I walk in, they say, oh, yeah, you're here to rent. Our power is out. Oh, my God. And the power is out as a result of the weather. Okay. It's not because of the, of the, the, the bandit, right? Mm -hmm. They have no power. They're not able to get onto their computers. Computer, right. So they have to get on a phone with, like, the manager who's at her house. She has power. She can do everything over the computer. <laughs> okay. Right? So they take a picture of, you know, my driver license and my credit card and... They're sending it to her, and the text isn't going through because the cell service is no good. Oh, God. <laughs> and, you know, I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, what kind of car am I going to get? Yeah, this I hope this of... ends with, like, a, a 1971 Chevy Vega. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's what you get. So she says, I also need your proof of insurance. Uh -huh. And I said, well, I've never had to provide proof of insurance, insurance when right. I rented They just ask you, do you have it? Yeah, and you usually, you know, initial saying, so you, I, yeah. I'm covered somewhere else, right. I don't want your insurance. It turns out, at least this location, I don't know if it's all economy, they don't offer insurance. It's oh. not even something they offer. Okay. So you have to provide your own proof insurance. of insurance. 
So I get on the phone and I call my son back here, who luckily is at home, and luckily my cell service is going right. through. And I said, hey, can you go to the car and find out our policy number? So he did that. Oh, my God. So this took forever. Finally, she has a car for me. It's like this Nissan. It's actually fairly nice. It's not okay. bad. Just a, yeah. you know, just a sedan. And I'm looking around. There's no damage or anything. And she starts up the car and gets the mileage. We make sure it's full of gas, that kind of thing. And I'm putting my stuff in the trunk. And I said, oh, can I have the keys? And she says, oh, the keys are already in there. You know, the car is running. Right, right. right? So it's, oh, of course, right. So I'm about to get in the car. <laughs> she had been walking away. She comes back up to me and said, oh, no, sorry. Here are the keys. It was one of those remote Yeah, starters. it's one of those, you know, keyless entries, yeah, keyless, right? right? So <laughs> the car was running. I could have driven away <laughs> without the keys, and it would be fine. Now, right. I think you actually get a warning if you get too yeah, far away it, from the it, keys. It does. It and ours, I would have ours known. does that. It beeps. Right. But yeah. I could have seen myself driving all the way to Biloxi without the keys. <laughs> right. Well, and there, you just have to leave the not, car on the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I know. We haven't even gotten to Biloxi or gambling yeah. or anything. I'm just telling this story. All the employees are saying, yeah, we're going home. I hope they send us home yeah. because of the weather that's coming in. Right. So I'm thinking, I'm not going to go to Harris, New Orleans. No. I'm not going to risk it and get stranded there or the weather, whatever. Right. I need to get to Biloxi. Right. And so that's what I did. I drove straight to Biloxi. There was a lot of wind. I didn't hit any rain. But you know, when I came back to drop the rental car off, I was talking to the woman who helped me, and she said, oh, yeah, as soon as you left, the rains came in, right? And then oh. the weather got really bad. Yeah. So turns out if I'd gone to Harris, New Orleans, I'm sure I would have hit some of that rain. I I was hoping you'd say, when you get to Biloxi, they tell you your reservation's been canceled yeah, that'd due be to best. weather. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And we emailed you. Yeah, we emailed you. <laughs> Didn't you get that email? <laughs> Something I found out after the fact is, because the Final Four, apparently, and everything, Harris, yeah. New Orleans, they were charging for parking. Wow. And not like five dollars, like thirty dollars to, to charge. Yeah, car. right. So yeah. I might have had to pay that. This was a Wednesday, so you know the, the right. tournament hadn't really started yet. But I ended up not going to Harris, New Orleans. I thought maybe I'd stop there on the way to the airport when I left, but so yeah. I didn't get there. So that so was we a, have no report on Harris. No New report Orleans. on Harris, New Orleans. Okay. People say that it's nice, and I'm sure it is. We'll and, leave that for another time. <laughs> yep. Right. So I get to Biloxi. I go to Harris. Now, this Harris property is small. Yeah. I was really surprised when I went in there and I'm checking in everything. I'm looking, there are only a couple of restaurants. Their gift shop is just minuscule, right? Uh-huh. Very few items, very small. Wow. And yeah, the hotel in, in general is small. Now, I found out that what it used to be was the casino was across the street on the water. That was the law. The casino actually had to, it had be, to be on, on the, the water, water, right? And then it was wiped out. When Katrina hit, uh, and so the law was changed where they, you know, it doesn't have to be on water anymore. So they converted what used to be only the hotel and restaurants and oh, stuff like right. that into it, the whole thing, into the whole thing, including yeah. a casino. So the yeah. casino layout is a little odd, right, and kind of small. So that's, that's that's like similar to um, Harris, Indiana. Where the uh, yeah. the casino was on a boat on the water, but there was this long hallway. That connected it to a hotel, exactly. That's which what was it used on to land mm-hmm. and stuff yeah. and everything. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 Oh, so that explains it'd be pretty small then, because they the hotel lobby became the casino floor. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it used to be like. Yeah, you know the layout, but yeah, you you got the right idea. So I check in, and she says, "Okay, we've got a king size bed, smoking room." And I said, "Do you have anything non smoking?" I don't know why my host made a smoking reservation. I whatever. Yeah. I but do you have anything non smoking? She said, "Let me check." And she said, no, sorry, you know, we're completely booked up. We don't have non-smoking. So I'm thinking, well, okay, fine. I can probably Yeah, deal with you that. can deal with it. So I go up to the room. <laughs> it reeks. Reeks. I have never been <laughs> in any rooms where it was this overpowering. <laughs> I think people well, who stayed there. This is a great there, trip so People far. who stayed there before me. <laughs> Chain smoke. Yeah, right. the whole time, anytime they were in the room. There were 16 people in that room, Mark, all <laughs> chain smoking. Now, I... If I'm in a stinky environment, I remember when I was a kid, I took some summer school class in oceanography, and the teacher had all this stuff in formaldehyde in there. When you'd get yeah, in in the morning, yeah. it reeked, but as the day went on, you didn't even notice you got it. Used you got it. used yeah, to it. Yeah, it's right. like when you have dissection in, in medical school. Okay. And, and right. it, the right. first time you're in there, you can't believe how bad that is. I never quite got used to the smoke in this room, <laughs> right? It was always well, it'd be lingering. hard to sleep with that 
smell. Y- yeah, I actually slept okay, and I don't know if it's because of you know I always have trouble sleeping in Las Vegas. Maybe it's because of the dry air, right. or you know who knows what. Surprisingly, I slept okay. Yeah, even it's probably because your senses were overloaded, and you just went into some kind of unconscious mode. It could be, yeah. <laughs> it probably put me. I was probably under the influence. You, so of so far, it's been kind of stressful trip. Yeah, you're you're getting the gist of it. So I, uh, you know, go into the bathroom and I didn't notice it right away, but there's like this trail of sticky substance on the ground. You know, it's kind of clear, but it's sticky, you know, (laughs) dust and hair is collected on it. Really? What? So I get a towel and kind of clean it up and it's disgusting and throw the towel in a corner. (laughs) What was so, that? I don't know. And see, the thing is, when Would I... Would you like me to guess? <laughs> no, thank you. So, you know, I had called housekeeping, too, and I said, oh, you know, I'm not sure if this is this hotel is one where you have to request housekeeping or if it's automatic. Right. And she said to me, oh, you know, we don't do housekeeping for occupied rooms, which I kind of, I guess right. is kind of a trend, you know, yeah, after right. COVID and everything. So, Okay, fine. I, you know, I, one of the things I like about going on vacation is how they, you know, clean up the room every day. Right. But at the same time, it's like, okay, nobody's coming into my room. I kind of like that too. Too, Right. 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 It would have been better story if you had called the housekeeping and she immediately said, oh, is that about the sticky stuff (laughs) on the floor? And when you said yes, and then she (laughs) clicked. I would have loved that. Yeah, I'd try to find a room in another hotel at that point. (laughs) So, you know, they have a safe there. This is pretty standard that uh, hotel yeah. rooms have safes, especially uh, hotels with casinos. So I look, and there are two safes. Wow. There's one kind of attached to the floor, uh-huh. and then there's one sitting on top of it. And I realized the one on the bottom is broken. It doesn't work. Oh, uh, okay. So what they had done was they brought in a new safe and, and just, just set put it, it on top. top. So you could carry it away? Yeah. It's not <laughs> attached to anything. This new safe. So I'm thinking, should I even bother putting anything in the safe if somebody can just yeah. walk away with it? <laughs> guy walking through the lobby with his safe under his arm. Nobody says anything. Oh, he's <laughs> got a safe. He's, he's taking it. I will say this. The room was overlooking the coast, so I had a great view yes. from my okay. window. Okay, so that was something good about the room. Yeah. So I, already I'm thinking, well, this is probably the worst hair as I've ever been to. Yeah. And as I was talking to more people on the trip, too, Harris Casino was the only one anybody really had anything to complain about. Really? The dealers and, you know, just kind of the layout. So... Oh, geez. Harris Gulf Coast, even though Boomtown... Boomtown's kind of thought of as like the sawdust joint, the real cheap minimums right, and things right, like that. Right. But I think, honestly, when you talk to people, Harris is like the dumpy property. Okay. Yeah, and it's certainly yeah. the worst Harris I've ever stayed at. Right, right. So right. <laughs> Well, from now, I'm learning a lot. I really am learning a lot yeah. from your trip here so far. I mean, I'm going to request, do I want one safe or two? <laughs> uh, does that room come with one safe or two? I could care less about the king-size bed. How many safes are there in right. my room? And how many safes are attached? Tashed, yeah. I'd like one attached and one unattached. <laughs> yeah. That way you can take your money with you wherever you go, and it's safe. <laughs> That's right. So that was the first night I went to bed fairly early. So the next day, Thursday, the official trip hadn't really begun yet. So I decided what, what I'll do is I'll drive around to all the casinos. Check them all out. Yeah, because yeah. probably during the course of the trip, there's some we won't go to. You're right. right. You know, just right. people get together. And stuff. So I went all around to all the different ones just to check and join their players club and things like that. One interesting thing, I went to Boomtown and I went to sign up for their players club. And she said, oh, I see you're already in our system. From uh, Hamul? And oh. I'm thinking, oh, Hamul? I thought Hamul was just independent. And then later some people were reminding me, oh, well, they're part From of the Hollywood. It, so Yeah, yeah it when was, it used to be Hollywood. When it used to be part of Penn National, you know, it was yeah. that. So I was still in their system for oh, that. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that was interesting. And then there was a Golden Nugget. They're part of Golden Nugget. And IP, they're part of Boyd. And Beau Rivage, they're part of MGM, and right. you know, there was a Hard Rock and you know other ones. But anyway, so that was nice. I was able to check them all out. One thing I will say about this, this was true of every casino, every entrance to the casino, there was a security person at a podium. Right. Every single one. If there were multiple entrances into the casino, say from the parking garage elevator or just you know from huh. the outside, 
they were there. And I assume that's part of the law or whatever. And mostly they were just checking ID for people who looked underage. Right, right. There was one case where Tim actually tried to walk in with a backpack and they wouldn't let him. Oh, really? Apparently that was some new policy. This was at Palace. And so he had to go back to the car to, you know, put it well, away. What if you so. were checking into the hotel? I don't know. I, there was probably a... This was to get into the casino. Not yeah, the hotel, no but the actual oh, there casino, was a different, right? So it was probably entrance. a different... Yeah, so... Wow. But that was consistent through yeah. all the hotels, that, you know, a check location. Now, here at Harris Rincon, they do have a podium by the elevators there. Yeah, but it's always... It's well, not always manned, though, is not it? Not always, but most of the time it is. At yeah. high traffic times, it definitely is. But, but through, the rest of the entrance... Yeah, the front are, entrance, there's nobody. There's nobody, yeah, yeah. so... All right, let's actually get on to part of the trip. The first meetup was at Beau Rivage, which is the nicest property, uh, and I agree, it was the nicest property. And Mike, if you were to just be transported right into the center of Beau Rivage and and asked, okay, where are you? You'd say, oh, I'm at the Bellagio in Las Vegas. I mean, the Uh decor, the way it's laid out, you know, it's it's very much like that, so... The craps tables were all full, but we walked by a Bakra table. It was Midi Bakra, the M I D I, not yeah. Midi Bakra, but Midi Bakra. And it was $50, and it's a squeeze game. A squeeze game is where you actually get to touch the cards. So whoever has the most money bet on banker, they get to touch the banker's cards, and whoever has the most money bet on player gets to touch the player. Yeah. And it's the game too, where you can bend the cars, yeah. kind of tear them if you want to. Right. You know, right. I don't know if they'd be happy if you know you completely ripped it up because at the end they do collect all the cards. But it's part of the culture, the ritual of playing right. baccarat. Right. It's not just showing the cards right away. You you know you're real slow and you peel, peel it, back it back and you yeah. kind of things. <laughs> I hate that. To be honest, uh, I hate that. All right, but Mike, I'll tell you, we fell in love with this game yeah. on this trip. Tim and Mississippi Rob and others. It would drive you crazy. Yeah. It, it would drive it, you crazy. I it, agree. It, You'd it, be saying, I got to get to the craps table. Yeah, that, that, because it's so slow. It is very slow and deliberate. deliberate but yeah. if you're having a good time with it, you know, you're peeling back, come on, come on, you know, <laughs> at the... You can have a blast, and there's plenty of time to socialize. Right, it's right. a very, it's more social than it, right. you know, even craps, because craps is yeah. just you know yeah, continually right. going. So we played fifty dollars at Beau Rivage, and then most of the rest of the time at IP, they had a twenty five dollars squeeze game. Nice, and so we descended on that, and we just played for hours, uh, you know. And really, you're you're not going to swing too far no. once the other, right? Oh, no, it's going slower than Pi Gal Poker for the most part. Right, there aren't as many pushes. Right. But I mean, we had a blast. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, it is a good game if you're there just socialize and drink. Yeah, I mean, that's you what know. it was. So, again, we met up on that first night. We did play a little craps. We had some food. Listener Doug, who had been over at Boomtown earlier, told us that while he was there, they shut down the roll to win table, uh-huh. saying that there was some illegal software on it and that the Mississippi Gaming Commission had closed it down. Now, over the course of the weekend, sure enough, we found out all the roll-to-win tables, at least in Biloxi, had been closed down. Wow. And we got varying stories from right, pit bosses right. of course, and dealers. you're not going to know. But it was basically that, yeah, there was something in the software that was illegal. not Probably not cheating or not wrong. There was oh, something... Just some kind of uh, manufacturing yes, kind of defect something or something. Something that was going against you know, yeah. the laws in Mississippi. Because we heard that at Paris, New Orleans, their role to win table was still going. I, I contacted you and said, yeah, hey, yeah, they if were, you go up to Harris for your free place, is the roll to win? And you yeah, said, yeah, they, it's they still, were still going. there. So going. Who know, we never did find out what the deal was, and you know, maybe we will eventually. But yeah, anyway, well, so. you probably won't unless it was something nefarious. Y- yeah, it's you probably know, if it's you know, something sort of just mundane. Some and mundane, yeah, yeah you're not going to yeah, find out. Yeah. We did play a little craps though that first night at Beau Rivage, and something kind of funny. Mississippi Rob walked away to go use the restroom and left his chips there, of course, right? And everybody watches, and so he came back. And he said to the dealer, I'm pretty sure I had a thousand here. There was like, you know, two hundred, <laughs> right. three hundred dollars in front. Right. He's just yeah. joking. Joking. He said, Yeah, I'm pretty sure I had a thousand here. And she said, I'm pretty sure it's gone. It was just <laughs> so fast. Right. And just <laughs> like uh, SOL. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's heard that before. <laughs> Probably, yeah. It just came back. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's gone. <laughs> she should have Yeah, some guy came by and took it. I, we, I, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. Oh, we saw it happen. Yeah. yeah, you, yeah. you should probably Nobody find it. Nobody stood up for He you. had bright red hair <laughs> yeah, and he right. was uh, wearing a purple shirt. 
So anyway, uh, you know, over the course of the trip, we went to various casinos. We, we played a lot at IP, which I said where we played the Bakra. When I first went over to IP, I went over with Jeff. You know Jeff. He's come out yeah, to the right. uh, Harris Southern California before. We went over there. The craps tables were full. And I said, well, let's go find Pai Gao because that's kind of our backup too. Yeah, playing Pai Gao. Right. No face-up Pai Gao that we could find by really? uh, in Biloxi. In, in right? it was, Biloxi. No, okay. it's all just regular standard Pai Gao. Anyway, we were heading over there, and I noticed that the Mississippi stud table is open. Nobody's there. Right. And it's a $10 minimum. Now, with Mississippi Stud, with a lot, in the case with a lot of carnival games, ten dollar minimum is sort of deceptive because if you're going to stay right. all the way to the end of the hand, yeah, you're going to be putting you out have to put up more money. money. And if you stay to the end of the hand in Mississippi Stud, the least amount you're going to have out there is forty dollars. Right, ten dollars plus ten, 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 ten. The way that it right. works out, right? Yeah. So then, well, I'm gonna. You know what? I haven't played Mississippi Stud in so long. I'm in Mississippi. Yeah, <laughs> you right. know, it's ten dollar minimum. I want to play. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Mike, I spent a good three, three and a half hours playing at that Mississippi, Mississippi stud said, table. Really? Yep, and I had a blast. Oh. Yep. And at the end, I ended up even turning a profit. You know, I bought in oh. for like three hundred, four hundred dollars, and almost lost it all. It like a lot of carnival games, you need right. to hit those big hands. You every need once to hit a while, big hand, you know, right. to make a recoup. Exactly. And so, you know, it finally hit, and I hit a couple at the end. I just had a blast. Yeah, so, you know, that might be what I do from now on. You, just, we go up, and you play craps, I'll play Mississippi Let's just be stud. stud. Yeah, we'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> I did play craps at Harris Gulf Coast. They had two tables. One was crapless, and one was standard. When only one was open, it was always the crapless. Uh, I guess people just like playing yeah. there, right? Well, so. I mean, you can kind of justify that by the fact that it satisfies both people yeah, I guess the so. people who want yeah. to play crapless and regular craps it you, could be you I'll, could just although play betting it. the pass line the odds are so right. much worse right, right? because yeah. you know your points well i was rolling so i had to bet on the pass line and sure enough i had a point of 12 okay right and i also placed some other numbers i'm starting to win and I'm thinking, well, okay, I'm going to put some odds behind my 12. 12, right. You know, and uh-huh. so I'm rolling, rolling, get more. Finally, I get $50 behind the 12. Wow. And I rolled the 12. Nice. So that's nice. six to one. That in yeah. the back pays six to one. Yeah. So that's $300. So yeah. Yeah, that was kind of exciting. Woo! <laughs> Tipping the dealers. <laughs> that's the extent of the craps, though, I played at Harris Gulf Coast. You know, my oh, okay. where I was staying, you know, like yeah. for the reasons that I said. That was the whole right? thing. Just, yeah. 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 The other craps, and this was probably the biggest craps get together we had, was at Palace, which is a non smoking casino completely non-smoking that was nice they did kick you out because of your smell from your room oh my gosh when i got home sherry was saying my clothes reeked i mean you know i took him out of my suitcase (laughs) and it just overwhelmed her you know compared to say a vegas trip that's when you take the suitcase and just stuff the whole suitcase into your washing machine (laughs) just push it down in there and run it through once like that yeah then take it out then individually watch yeah Yeah. i should we should have done that (laughs) So Palace, we played craps. I finally met Brian Dancer. Oh, nice. Who we talked about a lot on the show, and yeah. his wife, Deb. They were the nicest people, Mike. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. They were just so terrific. Uh-huh. They were so Great. happy to be there. They said Palace is their casino of choice when they're in Biloxi. All right. And Where do they live? They live in, I believe, Tallahassee, they said. Okay. All right. right. So they, but when they come, they stay at Palace. The table was kind of hot and cold. They, yeah, ultimately, no big wins, no big losses. In fact, at the end, everybody, oh, how'd you do? Oh, I lost a little bit. I won a little bit. Really depended on how you bet. But uh, the dice finally got around to Brian, and he had a great role. Nice. And uh, so we just had a great time at that table. That was the most fun at craps that we had there the whole time. All right. And the point was nine at one point. And I was kind of putting on a show. I, you know how I was getting. I was drinking, and so yeah, I was loud. All right. And you know, you know how I know I get that. <laughs> and so the point was nine, and I thought I'm going to really focus in on the dice when they land. And if it's nine, I'm going to explode. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. So I'm watching and watching, you know, and look, and one of the dice is five, and then on the other comes four, and immediately I just no, no, and. The dealer jumped. She was, <laughs> it was so loud and so scared. <laughs> she, <what? laughs> so we were tipping, so I hope that was okay. <laughs> but we had a great She's time. She go, goes home, <laughs> sits in her chair. She's got this pounding headache. She's thinking, that guy. Uh. <laughs> So anyway, Brian and Deb, it was uh, really nice to meet you. We, I met so many. T- I can't, you know, yeah. mention everybody that we met on the trip. It's just impossible. Remember, you're going to forget some people. But all right, so let me tell you a few more stories. Uh, let me wrap up the trip 
And then I'll just tell you some little individual stories that don't okay, really fit right. into the narrative. When I left, I was checking out. This was part of my Seven Stars retreat, which means free airfare, which right. really it covered. Again, you know, Final Four weekend, even though right. it was Southwest. And free rooms. And then a $500 folio while I'm there. There's no way I could have spent all $500 because they didn't really have any shops or anything. It was just the gift shop and restaurants and yeah. what have you. So uh, fine. But, you know, I rang a, a bill of like 150 bucks or something like that. So I go to check out and I said, yeah, I want to make sure there's no balance. She said, oh, yeah, it's, balance is like $150. And I said, well, this is part of my retreat. There should be a $500 five, folio. folio. Yeah. No, I don't see anything about that. What? Uh, so, you know, it's one more thing. Uh, she gets on the phone, talks to some host. All right, she's going to call me back. Uh, so I go and buy some things, do some things. Finally, I, I go over to the host. I knew where the host location was. And the host there was super nice. You know, say, oh, uh-huh. we'll get to the bottom of this. And I don't know what happened or what. Eventually, they got it taken care of. And I was able to go back and say, all right, it's all covered. So They had good. to call some executive who was at home. And they well, they were asking talk to who him. my host was that set it up. It's my yeah. guy in Las Vegas. And what was it supposed yeah. to be? And I'm like, yeah. well, obviously, it's my Seven Stars retreat. You paid for the airfare. And right. She's mm-hmm. looking at the records, and it says, well, it shows airfare to Harris Rincon. And I'm saying, like, I live Lit- near Harris. <laughs> I didn't fly to Harris. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know what happened, but they got it worked out so yeah. far. <laughs> I drove back to the rental car place, you know, checked in. That worked right. out fine. Okay, They good. shuttled me over to the rental car hub, hub where I caught a shuttle back to the airport. Now, the rental car it's hub. first time somebody's had to take two shuttles <laughs> yes, exactly. to get a rental car. The rental car hub, this was Sunday now, yes. between the two games right. and the, fight, the championship. Right. It was a madhouse. Really? Well, you know, when I'd been there Wednesday, it was a ghost town. And right. this was, if I had just arrived and I saw the lines that I was going to have to get yeah, into to right. get a rental car, it was the worst I've ever seen at any rental car ever. Now, this is on Sunday. This is Sunday. Why are people I don't know. leaving or coming? Because they would have been there for the final I, four. I don't know. You'd think they would have been there, but maybe but, Well, maybe these aren't final or... four people. Maybe these are just regular tourists going to, no, to it, New Orleans. I mean, it could be. But on a Sunday, yeah. I, you know, and you're arriving, yeah. I think a lot of it was for the final four. And I don't know if you've ever been to the Superdome. It's ridiculously big. It's way too big for a basketball game. Right. But it holds oh, a lot of people. It's people, crazy, right? you yeah. Know, so. Well, when I was watching, I was thinking, I was telling my wife, if you're sitting at the top, oh, it's what's the use? It's a rumor. You You'd be watching see, it on your phone. Yeah, you You'd can't have a better, even yeah. see anything. No, no. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's it's bad enough watching a football game, but a basketball game? I know. Well, maybe that was it. Maybe the rental hub was busy because people attended the Final Four on Saturday and they weren't happy with the two that made it to the finals, <laughs> so we're leaving. Yeah, but you, generally you don't have to stand in a line to leave, to drop right, off a to, car, to, right? Right. You know, that's yeah. all done. These are all people coming. So this was this was clearly people arriving in New Orleans. Who right? had so, tickets to the or final something, championship or game. They or? were there for, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, so. <laughs> all right, so that was basically my trip. Let me tell some individual stories here. One night we went to Scarlet Pearl, which is also a very nice Hotel Casino, kind of a, a, a little bit of ways from the rest of the Central Biloxi casinos. Okay. Uh, Affiliated with somebody or? Uh, no, not? it was independent. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a little bit of a drive. Uh, what, what am I, like five or 10 minutes. It's nothing. But I yeah, mean, you, you right. really wouldn't want to walk there. It's over a bridge and everything. So we get there. And for whatever reason, we're all kind of looking around. It's super nice. And it's like, and yeah, we're just not feeling it. Yeah. You know, I just don't really want to play here. And the minimums were kind of high. So anyway, some of the group decided to go play miniature golf. There's a miniature golf course associated with the hotel, too. And I thought, well, I don't really enjoy miniature golf. It's too stressful. Imagine what I'd be like on a real golf course, right? (laughs) Okay. So I said, I'm just going to play. Well, I signed up for their players club, and they had $20 free play to start with. So I just wanted to get it over with. I put it into a slot machine. I ended up hitting some small bonus and cashed out for $80. So turned 20 into 80. So that was good. So I went to the craps table. It was a $25 minimum. I thought, well, I'm just going to bet $25 on the line, and I'll place some numbers for $25. I'm not going to take odds. I just I don't want to yeah, go crazy. Right, right. So at one point, I had a place bet on the five, $25. And the five hit, and she paid me $36. Wow. 
So she thinks she was at uh, roulette or something. I, well, I, you know, at first I'm thinking it should be 35, Five, right? right? And right. I, it, she gives me 36. And it wasn't a mistake. That's something you don't accidentally yeah. put another dollar, dollar on. on. And so I asked her, I said, so are you paying this off as if it were a buy bet? Uh-huh. And she said, oh, yeah, everything, you know, $20 or more, it's a buy. Ah. And I'm thinking, oh, even on the five and nine. And we right. have talked about this, about how if you don't have to pay the VIG up front, if you only right. pay on wins, right. it actually is better to buy, to the, buy five the five and, five nine. and nine. And she said, yeah, we do that. And I said, well, how much can I bet on the five for just a dollar? Because 25 isn't going to pay it correctly, right? It's right. three to right. two. You want it to be an even number. And she said thirty eight dollars. Anything below forty, okay. I'm saying really. Wow. So, and I asked about the four and ten. Yeah. Yeah. You can go to thirty nine dollars. Thirty nine. Okay. Yeah. For just a dollar after the fact. Right. Well, Mike, right. I've never heard of buy bets that good except for free ones that we've right. heard about before. Right. Usually, I've heard them say, "Well, if you pay up front, you right. can go up to like thirty nine dollars. But if you pay afterwards, well, twenty five yeah, is about as high." Anyway, so long story short, yeah, I just you know bought the five and nine for thirty. I didn't want to go to yeah, go to a weird makes, number, you know, yeah, and thirty five for the four and ten. These turn out to be pretty good bets, compa- yeah. certainly compared to a right. five place. Sh- bet, sure, so. sure. And it was matter of fact, and you know when I was talking to the dealer, she was just kind of like, "Well, sure, that's the way it is." Every I, and then I realized, oh, maybe it is the way it is everywhere in Biloxi, and I just didn't know till right now because right. I hadn't been placing, placing the five, right, you know. Right. So at least it's Scarlet Pearl. So uh, so did after something. that you didn't place any bets anywhere else that no she after that, this that? was like one of the last nights so I didn't oh, even you know okay. play craps after that so oh, yeah, yeah yeah so anyway that was yeah that's nice nice to find out one thing I'm going to confess to here Mike okay you know those individual bubble craps games right. where you have your own dice you're right. not playing with right. other it's people just you right? yeah I got hooked on them really? this trip okay. right and when I'd be sitting there playing. People would come up to me, people in our group, and it's like, I'm surprised to see you here, Mark. Like, oh, yeah, I'm just killing time. But what I'm really thinking is, oh, my gosh, I like this. The low limits, the way that you can pace however you want to go, because I get frustrated on shoot to win, waiting for rolls. Rating, right. But then the other, the flip side was if somebody came up to me, Oh, hey, Mark, nice to meet yeah, you. Yeah, you can stop and talk. I could completely stop. Right, I'm not distracted right. by the dice rolling or, right. you know, do I have money out right, there? Right, right. So I played a lot of that, hey. and I'm kind of hooked on it, and I make no apologies. Okay? Are you going to so play that out at Harris Rincon now? If I'm not with you, I probably will. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, why not? I think so. Yeah. So did a lot of that this trip. <laughs> And you can make your bets, and then you don't have to do much after that, right? I mean, unless you're adding to them or well, It depends something. on what you're doing. I was yeah. doing a lot of come bets, so I did have oh, to kind of so, you okay. know, stay on top of it. But, but yeah, if, you if you're just, just placing numbers... If you just place some numbers, yeah, just, just sit there and let it... pounding the button. Yeah, just yeah. Get, immediately hit it as yeah. soon as it... Yeah. 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 A couple more stories. So Joey11yo on Twitter, yeah. he was there. You remember, we spent yeah. a lot of time with him in, in Atlantic, uh, Atlantic City. City. He was at Harrah's. At Harris and almost all the casinos there, they offer 10 times odds on craps. Okay. So he's there, and he had noticed on their website, it said 100 times odds. And so he complained to them, said, hey, look, it's 100 times odds, and actually showed them on the website. Right. And apparently he made quite a stink about it. Yeah. He was laughing about how they were, well, you're really getting worked up about this. Sir. Well, it says 100 times odds. A, yeah. And you know, ultimately, he probably didn't really care. It was just right. more like false advertising. Say, right. right. So they said, all right, tell you what, sir, you come back tonight, like after seven o'clock, and just for you, we'll offer you a hundred times odds. Wow. Not for anybody you're with, but just for you. Okay. So we're talking- Well, with- anyone who comes with him could say the same thing. Say, well, wait a minute. you're t- <laughs> Okay. When he's telling us this story, it's still before seven o'clock. And we went on and looked, and sure enough, they had changed the website, website to really? ten times odds, which is pretty impressive. I would think they'd have to go through so many hoops, yeah. You know, right. this corporate, this huge conglomerate right. to get a web, but no, they really just changed it to ten times odds. Uh, so I don't even think he went back to do it. It yeah. was more a matter of principle, <laughs> but he was gonna, you know, go back. I want a hundred times odds. He'd probably take like twelve times odds. <laughs> yeah, right. Who's gonna actually take a hundred times odds? Right now? But we thought that was pretty. Cool. <laughs> that is good. So one final story. We're all playing. Pie Gal Poker at Boomtown. Yeah. $10 minimum. They were super nice to us there. You know, even though it's like the dumpy place, it's great crew and great staff and everything. So, so we're playing Pie Gal, and Jeff, he is dealt four aces. 
So good. Okay, he's going to win on yeah, the side bet. Right, right. And he didn't have another pair. There was nothing else. So how do you play that hand, Mike? Pair, pair. Right. You pair of aces behind and a pair, pair of aces, aces up on front. Top. Right, right. So. yeah. But you can't I, lose. You could push, you but could you push, can't lose. Right, you can't lose because you, you've you're used using all the aces. Four of the yeah. aces, even yeah. if the dealer has to use the joker, joker. for an ace. Right. She can't have two aces. Two aces. Right? So yeah, right. you can't lose. Well, for whatever reason, Jeff played four aces in the five-card hand and king-queen in the two-card hand. Okay, now I could go with that. No. No. I mean, I, it's not the right way to play, but I can understand his thinking. He's thinking, well, the best she can play on top is king-queen if she doesn't have the joker. Right, yes, right. She's probably not going to play an ace up top, yeah. but any pair, and yeah. it's the wrong way to play. And right. I don't know, maybe Jeff was thinking, see, the thing is, if you're dealt four of a kind like that, you don't right. have to keep them together to win the bonus bets. Right, right. You yeah, don't you, have to. No, you can you, split you them You can up. split them. He knew that? I don't know. See, because if, so, if he didn't that, know that. So I can understand. But anyway, misplay your hand? Maybe not, because the dealer turned over flush, 6-5. <laughs> so he won the hand where he would have pushed if yeah. he played it the correct way. If the way. dealer had threes and twos with nothing else, yeah. he would have pushed. He would have pushed, but no, flush six five. So yeah. it's like, woo, Jeff's a big hero there. So we got a big kick out of that. So that's basically my story. Actually, Tim Lawson and Mississippi Rob and I talk more about the trip on the latest episode of the Better Life podcast, episode number... 174. Okay. Like we talk about a lot of things that I didn't cover here. So right. yeah, you're going to hear some things about the trip and more stories. So yeah. as instead of focus just on you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. So anyway, that was it, Mike. I'll tell you, I had a great time. I'd love to go back. I'm not sure under what circumstances I'd go back. I don't think I'm going to make seven stars this year or ever again, basically the way I think I'm going to continue to, to gamble. So I don't think they'd give me a free trip out there, but that doesn't mean I couldn't pay, you know, yeah. for myself if I can get a decent flight, you know, right. uh, that kind of thing. So well, I would love to go Well, you could always there. pay for a flight. You get there, you gamble enough, you get your trip paid right. for. Right, just, you know, set so, on yeah. one location. So Right. Yeah. I mean, if you had to pick, like say, oh, I'm going to make a trip this year, and I got to decide between Atlantic City or Biloxi or Colorado mm. or going to Canada or something... Would that be the place of your choice? Well, okay. I can't speak to Colorado or Canada because I've never been there. there. So I don't even want to put that in the equation. Okay. That's a good question. I sure love downtown Las Vegas because everything's close to each other. Well, I left Las Vegas out when I said that because that's something we can drive to and... You know, okay, that's so our go to. If you're so, asking me, say Biloxi versus Atlantic City, oh, yes. I'll go to Biloxi. You'll go to Biloxi. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's basically For what sure. I was wondering. For sure. So, yeah, yeah. just because of why. The people. Oh, okay. And, you know, people. I know there are stereotypes associated with it, but yeah, people in AC are a little rougher, a little yeah, more direct. A little coarse, yeah. You know, right. and I'm used to that. I have no problem yeah. with that. But, you know, the Southern hospitality, there's a certain amount of truth to that stereotype, too. Right. And everybody was super nice. You know, again, it was just such a relaxing trip, and right. everybody wanted you to win, and yeah, just oh, a, a okay, really good, good time. Well, yeah. that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm definitely going to have to do that all. Yeah, you really should. I think you'd have a really good yeah, time. Yeah, I'll drive there, to Biloxi. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, you know what, Mike? Gosh, that I went on quite a while on Biloxi there. Why don't we save all our phone calls for next episode? Okay, and then that sounds way we'll, good. We'll definitely have some We'll have a longer next that. episode. Yeah, we'll have a longer next episode, or at least a voicemail-heavy next yes. episode. All right, but before we go, we want to thank some people for some recurring donations from Kurt, from Jeremy at the Color Up YouTube Craps channel, from James, and from Robin at Anytime Gambling. Thank you very much. We also got a donation from Matcham High Low, the game that we talked about on an episode a while back. Thank you very much for that. And a donation from Neil. It was actually, he put us in a pool, kind of like a hundred square pool that you're used to for the Super Bowl, but it was for the whole tournament. You get a number for the losing team and a number number for for the the winning winning team. team. You know, that final digit. Yeah, right. And if you ended up in that square, you'd get some money back. And it was for every game in the tournament. And so the earlier games, you didn't get quite as much money. Right. And for the later games... Progressively got more you know, money as oops. it went on. And we got a little bit of money back from that. He put yeah. us in for free and we got some money back. So thank nice. you for that, Neil. Hey, be sure to check out our TV listing showing all the gambling-related shows coming up within the next two weeks at youcanbetonthat.com slash TV dash listings. And our list of gambling-related movies at youcanbetonthat.com slash movies. We'd love to hear from you. Call our voicemail hotline at 951-292-4377. That's 951-2-WAGERS. 951-2-WAGERS. 
Yes. Or you can email us at you can bet on that at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at you can bet on that and on Facebook at facebook.com slash you can bet on that. Finally, please go to your favorite podcast app and write a review of the show. We love getting your feedback. One thing I forgot to talk about, we were all sitting around at the Baccarat table, and we started talking about music. I was saying, oh, what's this song? I would try to name yeah, the song. Yeah, oh, that's the, your, you that's do that to thing, me right? all the yeah, time. <laughs> yeah, I, I like doing that. And we got started talking about music, and I was saying, yeah, you know, one of my favorite genres is ska punk. And the guys were kind of looking at me like, you like yeah. ska punk? Yeah. Because right. if you see me, you're thinking more like, Kenny G. G. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know yeah. And there's a guy, Hutch, there who's saying, really? I just can't imagine you driving down the road and listening to Scott Punk. And I got to talk about Mississippi Rob, about music, and there was a song came on, and it was by Ava Max. And he said, oh, yeah, it's Ava Max. I said, oh, I love Ava Max, and was listing some of her songs. And he was surprised, and I said, well, you know, I actually wrote a customized program yeah. <laughs> that searches through all the Billboard charts, and I update my Spotify playlist every Tuesday. Now they thought I was joking, right? They should know. They should know better. <laughs> but I do. I have this Spotify playlist that I update every week, right. so that it has all the songs so, that are on the the Billboard charts, all the right. different charts: hip hop and country and classic right. rock, everything. Right in right. the Hot 100. So he said, oh, send me that list. So I sent Mississippi Rob the list. He's all excited and put it up on Twitter. So we have this shared this love of pop music that neither one of us thought the other one would. You know, well, yeah, you don't right. know until you start talking with somebody. <laughs> so anyway, you got Which kind of goes to show that if people just communicate a little more yeah. and talk to each other, you'll find out a lot of us have similar interests. Sure, interests that, you don't that know. You, when you look at them, you think, oh, they, they're they not going to be interested in sure, that. Yeah. But then when you talk to them, you find out. So, hey, talk to everybody. Yeah, yeah. The world would be a better place. It would be better. Shifting gears here, we're in a pool now that Tim Lawson put together, a 13 pool, right. where you draw for a team. Well, actually, that we had kind of a draft for the team. I think some people could choose. We ended up with the Yankees, which is fine with us. Whoever's team has a final score of all the numbers between zero and 13 going through the whole year. Right. You have to, the, your final score. So you have to have a score where it ends in zero. You have to have a score where it ends in six. Everything yeah. up to 13 with the caveat that you get credit for 13 if your team scores 13 or more. Right. So 14, right. 15, 16, right. so, you get a 13. Uh, whoever gets that wins the pool. So it's kind of a fun way it's to do it. It's a very fun yeah. pool. Yeah, so we're looking forward I'm to I'm looking every day now, this, it's only been three days, but I'm looking to see who got what. One team got 13 already. Right. Well, we were watching that game. Houston yeah. had 12, 12 runs, runs exactly. And 12 is like the real hard one because you yeah. To get exactly, exactly 12. 12. Yeah, they should have stopped at 12 and yeah. they got 13. I think they scored more than 13. I no, don't know. It ended up was 13. it exactly 13? Yeah, it okay. 13. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah, we're getting a kick out of that. <laughs> Anything else you want to say, Mike, before well, we go? Well, Mark, I want to recap this podcast by saying I learned three things. All right, sir. Number one, and most importantly, is don't get too upset about Padre wins and losses. Good. It is what it is. And at the end of the year, you know, it'll I be can fine. live with that. I may not watch any yeah. games, but yeah, I can right. live with you it. You can live with that. <laughs> uh, number two thing to to take away from this podcast is Biloxi is a very nice place to visit. Yes. Sounded like a non-stressful gambling trip. Yes. Where you had it was, fun and people were nice and there was no other than you're getting there to Biloxi. The rest was pretty nice. Well, and we actually caught the weather perfectly. Now, there was that bad storm that first night, but yeah. after that, the, it was the weather was yeah. beautiful. I remember there was I, no humidity. Yeah. I'm sure there are times you can go yeah. and it's pretty, pretty humid out there, right? right? But and I texted you and you said that second day, he says, oh, it's wonderful today. Oh, yeah, I so, sent pictures. Yeah, it yeah, was just and it terrific. was not here. It was kind of crappy weather yeah. here. <laughs> but anyway, so that's the second thing I learned. Yeah. And the third thing I learned is that if I'm going to commit any crimes that I know I'm going to go to jail for, or something, uh, I should probably do them naked anyway, because it, it doesn't make it any worse. Yeah. It makes the story fun when somebody reads it. Right. Like, guy ran down the aisle screaming because there was turbulence, but he was naked. That's way more fun. Yeah, when they're charging you, yeah. they're kind of probably going to waive the indecent Decent exposure. exposure. Right. Yeah, That's right. the minimum thing. Yeah, you yeah. know, you're going to get in trouble for other stuff. So if yeah. like, if I'm going to rob somebody's house yeah. or a liquor store, whenever I decide that I'm going to commit some felonious crime... I'm going to do it naked. Okay, good. If you're a person <laughs> who prefers to be naked yeah. <laughs> uh, in public or with other people around than to have clothes on, then by all means. Well, it won't matter, right? Because I'll be in jail anyway. <laughs> yeah, I understand. But what I'm saying is, 
I think I'd actually prefer to leave my clothes on. <laughs> really? Even if I was committing a crime. <laughs> oh, no. I, teach you own. won't get in the news that way, Mark. It's, it'll uh, hit. Yeah. It'll, you'll be all over the world. Naked man, you know, arrested, whatever your particular crime of choice is. All right. I've got to adjust my priorities. Then, <laughs> yeah. I think, Start I thinking think about decision. that. Yeah. <laughs> Write a program for that. Okay. A customized program. <laughs> customized program. <laughs> for nudity while committing a crime. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Good night. Mark, that was wonderful. I had no idea you were so talented. The audience is going to love you.